Are you new to 3D printing and looking for a machine that has quick setup, can print fast, and produces high-quality models? Or are you already familiar with 3D printing? You have one or two printers, but you're looking for a real workhorse, something that can print in all the common filaments, produce prototypes, and even cosplay pieces. Well, it looks like Chitty's newest offering, the Q1 Pro, may be able to satisfy both of these camps. It is a fast and highly accurate 3D printer, and best of all, it is nearly completely automated, so you can unbox this and start printing immediately. You want to see more? Well, here we go. Folks, welcome to the channel. I am Leo of Prince Leo 3D. Thank you so much for joining me. If you are new to the channel, I welcome you. If you are a veteran, I say I miss you. It's been nearly two months since my last video. I had a lot of stuff going on outside of 3D printing. Uh, all good stuff, though. Uh, that is beginning to wind down, so that means 3D printing is back on the menu. And our first course is going to be the Chitty Q1 Pro. This is the newest 3D printer from Chitty or from Chitty Tech, and it so far has really blown me away. Chitty has been making a great foothold in the market of enclosed, very fast 3D printers as of late. All of Chitty's previous iterations were great 3D printers. However, they always lacked a little bit of that beginner-friendly edge. This 3D printer is running Clipper firmware, which is how it packs all the great features into one box. However, Clipper firmware does not necessarily lend itself to beginners. What Chitty was able to do with this 3D printer was still utilize Clipper to its fullest extent while also adding in some beginner-friendly features so you can just get up and running with little to no 3D printing knowledge whatsoever. Sounds great, right? Well, there's even more. Because this is enclosed and the print head can get up to such high temperatures, we can print any 3D printing filament we want. This has a touch screen on the front that will help navigate through the menus. There's a camera inside so we can watch our prints while we're not standing directly in front of them. And the best feature Chitty has implemented is the completely automatic leveling. That means we are hands off in any of the leveling functions. This 3D printer will probe the bed, it will level the bed, and it will even adjust your Z offset for you without you having to even lift a finger. And you can jump right in and begin printing immediately. If you can't tell, I really like this 3D printer. It worked well for me and it continues to work well for me. However, it is not without its rough spots and some of them were extremely shocking. So in this video, we're gonna go over all the nitty gritty, break down the different features, how they're implemented, why they're implemented, what that means for you if you are considering purchasing this 3D printer. Before we do, I wanna thank today's video sponsor, PCBWay. If you are interested in a DIY project or an electronics project, PCBWay should be one of the first places you look as a resource. Besides custom-built PCBs, they also provide additive manufacturing and CNC work. That means if you are running FFF or FDM only 3D printers and you want something done in resin, they can do that for you. Or if you are using 3D prints to prototype and your final model will be made out of metal, they offer those services for you, CNC and machining services. So I highly recommend whatever your project may be, give PCBWay a check. They likely have something that will fit, help, or adjust your plans to better suit your needs. Prince Leo 3D, thanks PCBWay for sponsoring today's video. So looking at this 3D printer aesthetically, I've heard it called a microwave, I've heard it called an air fryer. I like both those things. Of course, how appealing you find it will be subjective. This is an enclosed 3D printer. The front door is magnetic, it swings open and closed, and there is a see-through top plastic piece that completely encloses the frame. An enclosed 3D printer is great for two reasons. It will dampen noise, of course, but it also holds in the heat and creates a hot environment inside the chamber. Certain types of filament require a heated environment to properly print. Otherwise, they will warp and peel away from the build plate. 
an enclosure creates that hot environment passively. It will trap the heat from the print hand, but mostly the bed, and hold it inside. Now, most passive enclosures get to somewhere around 30 to 40 Celsius. That's about my guess with the printers I have. This, however, is actively heated. That means there is a chamber heating fan inside the enclosure that will actively heat and maintain temperatures, and it can get up to 60 degrees Celsius. That is like no other 3D printer that I know out on the market today. Every other enclosed 3D printer utilizes passive heat. The Chitty Q1 Pro has a heated chamber. Doesn't come without its cost, and we're gonna talk more about those as we dive into the enclosure. But looking at the back of the enclosure, that is where we will mount our filament. There are two options out of the box. We can mount it directly off the rear, or if we want more access to it from the front, there is a side mounted option. It's a little flimsy, but it works. And the filament will travel into the enclosure very well, regardless of which option you choose. Coming towards the front of the 3D printer, that's where we find our touchscreen. I found it to be responsive and pretty well set up. This isn't as robust as a clipper screen, if you're familiar with that, but this does have a ton of options to help you start prints, adjust prints, fix prints, and calibrate certain features. And the touchscreen is also where you will hook this 3D printer up to your local area network. This touchscreen will also help you set up the 3D printer when you first unbox it. There is a ton of different screens that this will go through to make sure that you unbox this properly and you get some initial calibrations finished. Moving inside this 3D printer, we have a steel reinforced frame. Also inside that enclosure to the right side is an auxiliary parts cooling fan. This is a larger fan very common in these enclosed 3D printers nowadays, and this will help cool parts across the build plate as it is printing. If we wrap around to the back of the 3D printer, that is where we will find our chamber heating fan. Now, there is some controversy about this because while this is the only 3D printer that offers it, this does not do it in the most safe manner. The channel Vector 3D did a teardown of this 3D printer a few weeks ago and found that when the chamber heater is on, there is live voltage going to the fins in that chamber heater. That is extremely, extremely dangerous. While the chamber heater is active, you will very likely never find your hands or any other parts in this printer. That doesn't make it okay though. Mandic Labs did a really, really nice video on this problem and a possible solution. I'm gonna link it in the description. If you are considering this 3D printer, Give that video a watch because it's definitely some information you're going to want to know about. The build volume is 245 millimeters in the X, 245 millimeters in the Y, and 245 millimeters in the Z axis. There are two motors that move the Z axis on either side, and those motors move independent of each other. Oftentimes, when we see 3D printers with two stepper motors, they are operated synchronously, which means those motors are given input at the same time, so they move in unison. This 3D printer is equipped with two different stepper motors and two different stepper drivers, meaning the brains of those motors. So these motors can move independent of one another. So the left can move up and down and the right can move up and down without them having to do it at the same time. That is what is going to help us auto level this bed because we are going to use something called Z-Tilt and we're going to level the left and right side of the bed until we get it just right. And we're not gonna do any of it. Clipper is going to do it, the firmware is gonna do it, and it's gonna utilize those asynchronous stepper drivers or stepper motors to do so. This also comes with a PEI coated spring steel bed sheet. PEI coating is great for adhesion of all types of different filaments. And the fact that it is spring steel means that once our print is finished, we can let it cool, take the bed out of the 3D printer, flex it and our stuck on prints pop right off. So we get the best of all the different worlds. We get great adhesion and we also get very easy removal. So those PEI beds are A number one and this was a great one for me. It actually had tremendous adhesion right out of the factory. One annoyance of this bed was this plastic shroud that Chitty had installed around it. Now it was great for the bed sheet itself because it perfectly fit the bed sheet. You could line it up but there were times when you went to lay it in there and it didn't quite line up. It kind of hit the shroud or it laid on the shroud. And that meant that the bed was gonna be slightly higher in those areas. 
So you really have to be particular when you're putting the bed sheet back. Make sure it lines up perfectly without resting on the shroud or you may have some bed probing or bed adhesion problems. This also means that we can only put a four, did I say 425? This also means we can only put a 245 by 245 millimeter bed here because that's all it will fit. Of course, we can put something smaller, but we really don't want to do that. This shroud is only held on by four screws and they are beneath the bed. I removed the screws and then I removed the shroud. This gave me ample room for this build plate. I could now put the bed sheet on in a much easier fashion. And also it allows me to use bigger build sheets. I have some other bed sheets from some of my Bamboo Labs printers. Those are 256 by 256, slightly larger than this 3D printer, and they worked just as well. One important factor though, if you do decide or you are considering taking off that shroud, there is a ground terminal that is connected to a screw at the back right of that bed shroud. If you remove the shroud, you are going to need to put a new screw in so that ground terminal remains in place. I use an M3 by 10 millimeter screw, washer, and nut to reaffix that ground terminal and make sure I did not cause any issues. So if you are considering that, which I kind of recommend you would because it opens up that build surface for you, definitely make sure you are diligent about removing that ground terminal and then replacing it just in the manner you found it. Now those aren't the only tricks that this bed has up its sleeve. Beneath it, it also has three load sensors or force sensors. Those operate in a very similar way to a kitchen scale or a normal scale, where as pressure touches it, it detects the force. The way Chitty is applying those sensors is to find our Z offset. Those are the sensors that are going to determine our initial Z offset. And for me, they've worked perfectly. Auto bed leveling and Z offset adjust. How has Chitty done it? To that end, Chitty is using a bed probe, the bed load cells, and then some really cool features of Clipper firmware to make all of this happen. This is a proximity bed probe, meaning it gets close to the bed and determines where the bed is and where it needs to stop. Using that bed probe, this 3D printer is going to take height measurements of the bed and create a map of the bed surface. That will quite literally be the contours or the grooves and the dips of the bed surface so that the 3D printer can adjust the nozzle's course as it's printing over the different areas of the bed. This is going to maintain a constant height between the nozzle and the bed. That is one way in which Chitty is using the bed probe. Another way is by using Z-Tilt. That's a firmware feature. Before a print, the bed probe is going to move to the left side of the build plate and then to the right side, and it's going to take height measurements of those sides. Then, using those independent stepper drivers that operate the bed, meaning they can move left and right independent, it's going to adjust the left and right side of the bed so our bed is perfectly level. That is the second way that Chitty is using that bed probe to automate leveling for us. Now the third way uses the load cells in the bed and it's wild. When the 3D printing bed probe activates at its lowest point, it determines where the bed is, but it doesn't know where the nozzle is in relation to that probe. The load cells are gonna tell us where that nozzle is. The first thing that this printer does is clean off the nozzle. So through an automated script, this will heat up your nozzle. It will extrude filament, and then it uses this nozzle brush in the back to clean the tip off completely while the nozzle cools down. After the nozzle is cleaned and cooled, it will home the 3D printer. That will have the bed probe find out where zero is or where the bed is. Then it will begin to slowly descend the nozzle closer to the bed until the nozzle hits the bed and triggers those force sensors. And then it takes those measurements and creates the Z offset. This way the bed probe can find out where it thinks zero is and then the descension of the nozzle towards the bed determines the height between the nozzle and the bed probe. Do you not understand what that means? You really don't need to. All that means is this does a tremendous job of adjusting the Z offset for us completely without us worrying about it. And unlike some 3D printers that do some form of Z offset adjustment, you can make your own alteration to the offset yourself. Through this 3D printer's webpage, you can continue to edit the Z offset to your liking. 
If you want it to be compressed or squished more, you can do that. If you want it to move away from the build plate, you can do that too. So while this 3D printer will do it all for you, it still leaves us some agency to tweak settings as we see fit. Above the bed, we have the lightweight print head, and this looks like a lot of the other offerings from Chitty Tech. This time, however, the front cover of the print head is held on by magnets, which is a market improvement. Now, under that front cover is where we'll find one of our first filament runout sensors. This sensor detects when there is filament passing through it. So while you are printing, filament passes through here and all is well. The second this sensor detects no more filament within it, it will pause your print. I tried this out on a few different models. It worked perfectly. It paused the print, it parked the print head, and then it allowed me time to reintroduce new filament and to resume the print. So this worked just as intended. Now, besides the print head, there's actually an additional filament runout sensor and it's found towards the rear of the 3D printer. Right where the filament enters the enclosure is a filament tangle sensor also known as an encoder or an optical sensor. What this filament sensor does is it detects movement of filament. So if at any point in time, filament is no longer moving through that sensor because either there is a tangle on the reel of filament and it can't move, or perhaps your print head is clogged. If this detects there is no movement, it will pause your print. And again, will allow you to repair the issue and resume the print. Below the filament runout sensor is a dual geared extruder. Dual gears means we are pushing or pulling from both sides of the filament. That allows us more consistent extrusion and the ability to print flexible materials like TPU. Below the extruder is a Bamboo Lab style hot end. It has a ceramic heating cartridge which will heat this up rather quickly to a maximum temperature of 360 degrees Celsius. It has a copper heat break which will fight against any heat trying to get to filament where it shouldn't. The body and shaft of the nozzle are copper covered in nickel and the head of the nozzle is hardened steel. Why are we using two different materials? Copper is great at transferring heat, which means it's great at melting filament at a very fast rate. That is how we can maintain those high speeds and those high flow rates. The hardened steel tip means that we can push through abrasive materials without worrying that the tip will wear out. Abrasive materials include anything that is filled, carbon fiber filled, glass filled, marble filament, glow in the dark filament, wood filament. So with this bimetal nozzle, we are sort of getting the best of all the worlds. Copper is going to melt filament very quickly and the hardened steel tip will allow us to print any type of filament without worrying we are going to wear the nozzle down. Next to the extruder is our bed probe and Chitty is using an inductive probe for this or a proximity probe and that uses a magnetic field to determine when to stop or where zero is while we are homing. And that probe works in unison with our steel PEI coated bed. The parts cooling fan for this 3D printer is tucked behind the printhead it is a 5010 blower fan. At the back of the printhead we have its own breakout board and this board itself is connected to the main board and the wiring for this is all very neat and tidy. Also built into this print head is an accelerometer. That means we get access out of the box to resonance compensation, also known as input shaping. Due to the high speeds and accelerations of this 3D printer, it's going to cause vibrations. We can use input shaping or resonance compensation to counteract those vibrations. The way we do that is through a calibration that uses an accelerometer. And you can calibrate this directly from the touchscreen. It's only a few button presses on the touchscreen to make this calibration start, save its results, and then apply those results to every subsequent print. Chitty has made this really simple for us. And for those that know Clipper, if you want a more hands-on approach, you do of course have access to all the different input shaping values directly from your Fluid web page. So you can run input shaping from there, you can get the results, you can download your graphs, and then you can adjust input shaping or you can choose an input shaper for whatever suits your needs. This is sort of the yin and yang of how Chitty has set this up. They give beginners a really simple way of getting access to that calibration, but it also gives the veterans of Clipper and 3D printing access to all the little nitty gritty that we want, and we can adjust all those things as we see appropriate. This is a Core XY 3D printer. 
which means the print head moves along the left and right, or the X axis, and the front to back, or the Y axis, while the bed moves up and down along the Z or the vertical axis. That, along with the fact that every stepper motor that drives those axes is mounted to the frame, and not the axes itself, allows this to reach such high speeds and such high accelerations. This 3D printer boasts a maximum acceleration of 20,000 millimeters squared per second, a maximum speed of 600 millimeters per second, and a maximum flow of filament through the hot end at 30 cubic millimeters per second. Can this 3D printer hit those high speeds and those high accelerations? For me, yes, it was able to. The next question, should we be printing at those high speeds and accelerations? And in my opinion, no, not every day. Those high speeds and accelerations are nice as a number to look at and to know that we can do it. But as an everyday 3D printer, printing at those high speeds and acceleration is going to prematurely wear down this 3D printer. The belts, the stepper motors, and all the unwanted vibration that it's going to impart to our models. Where did I fall on my daily driving prints? Well, about half of those numbers. For all the profiles I set up, I was printing at 10,000 millimeters squared per second in acceleration, a top speed of 300 millimeters per second, and I usually kept my flow rate to around 21 cubic millimeters per second, even though I definitely could go a little higher. In my opinion, the time savings you gain with using those really high speeds and accelerations doesn't translate well to producing consistent quality models. You are going to wear your 3D printer down unnecessarily, and the quality of the models, the finished models, is not going to look nearly as good as it would if you were using more conservative values. Overall, this is a fast printer. This is an accurate printer. Is it any faster than the other enclosed Core XY printers that are on the market? No, not really. Does it keep up with them? Absolutely. Will you need to do some extra aftermarket modifications on this to get this faster? You really shouldn't have to. This prints fast, this prints accurately, and this comes built in with all the different calibrations we need to make sure that over the top speed isn't a hindrance to us. If we remove the back cover of this 3D printer, we will find the main board and the power supply. Now this is a maker base main board. It is very similar to the other options that Chitty has been placing in their Core XY 3D printers. However, this comes with slightly increased onboard memory, which is a great thing. Wireless communication for this 3D printer is enabled not directly in the main board, but as an add-on USB drive that is already inserted. So everything is ready to go for you. To the right of those USB ports, there is an Ethernet port, but you'll notice it is absent. It's not there. Why Chitty decided to remove the Ethernet port for this particular printer, I will not know. I emailed them to ask them why. They gave me some vanilla answers as to they'll look into it. I mean, they know they did it. I don't know why they're looking into it, but they chose to remove Ethernet for this printer. Now, I know an Ethernet to USB adapter will work, but out of the box, this only has Wi-Fi communication if you want to hook this up to a network. The firmware of a 3D printer is basically its operating system. It determines how all of the features and functions will work. And this is equipped with the extremely powerful Clipper firmware. Now, if you know anything about my channel, you know I love Clipper firmware. I think it offers so many great tools. The one caveat is that it may not be the most beginner friendly because it does require a slight learning curve. Because Chitty has already pre-installed Clipper, we're kind of over that initial hump. And then on top of that, they've given us some tools through the touch screen to help beginners get themselves by a little easier. That's a great way to introduce new people to Clipper firmware. Now the powerful tools that Clipper firmware has are the speeds that it can help our 3D printer achieve, which this utilizes. The different calibrations we can use, like resonance compensation, which dampens vibrations, pressure advance, which makes sure we are extruding the correct amount of filament while we are making all these high speed movements. We get access to a webcam, which this has out of the box, and we get a front end or a web page that we can control our 3D printer from. So while we are on the same network that this 3D printer on, which generally is your house or office, and you have access to what we call the front end, that is like an expanded menu system that allows you to start prints stop prints, 
add print files, check previous print files. You can create time lapses with this 3D printer. You can check old print files and you can modify a ton of different features, including the overall look of that web page, to your heart's desire. Clipper gives you so much control over your 3D printer that while this is geared towards beginners, us veterans of 3D printing or us veterans of Clipper also get total control over this so we can tweak it to our heart's content. One feature we don't have out of the box is the ability to view this 3D printer from anywhere in the world. We can only communicate and view this printer using the webcam while we are on the same network connection. However, Clipper has access to a powerful service called Octo Everywhere. We can access our printer from anywhere, including outside of our home network. That means if you start a print and need to leave your house or your office where your 3D printer is, you can continue to monitor it. You can stop it if things go wrong. And Octo Everywhere has built in AI print failure detection. That means by using this free add-on, Octo Everywhere, we can grant this 3D printer AI print failure protection. And that is an awesome tool that is at our fingertips that Clipper affords us. Now I added Octo Everywhere to this 3D printer because I think it is a free tool that does so much for us. It's almost a no brainer not to. In a future video, probably my next video, which hopefully will be coming out in a few weeks, we're gonna talk a little more about Octo Everywhere, how you can add it to your 3D printer for free and just how simple it is to get up and running with it. In order to turn our virtual models into readable code, we need to use a slicer that is compatible with this 3D printer. Now, lucky for us, any available slicer out there on the market should be compatible with the Chitty Q1 Pro. I would say the two most prominent ones to use with this 3D printer would be Chitty Slicer or Orca Slicer. Now, because I was using this 3D printer before it was released to the public, there was no active profile under Chitty Slicers. So while I waited for Chitty to get back to me, I ended up creating my own printer profile using Orca Slicer. It was really simple and because this printer shares so many characteristics with other Chitty printers, I was able to import the X Plus 3D printer into Orca Slicer and then adjust the different attributes so that it suited this machine. After that, I created some printer and filament profiles and I was up and running. The 3D printer was doing its job. It worked really well and I would highly recommend Orca Slicer coupled with this 3D printer. Besides the very intuitive UI, you can wirelessly connect Orca Slicer to this 3D printer so you can seamlessly send print files after they're done slicing. And you even get a little tab to access the front end of this printer so you can start prints, stop prints, and monitor what is happening. Orca Slicer also has a lot of built-in calibrations that we can use and we want to use with this 3D printer, notably pressure advance and volumetric flow rate. This of course does have that chamber heater and we can activate and control it directly through Orca Slicer when we slice our models. Orca Slicer overall I think is a great pair with this 3D printer and in general I think Orca Slicer is the top slicer out there and I highly recommend it. So that is the breakdown of this 3D printer and my experience with it. I really like this printer. It was quick to set up out of the box. It was an intuitive design and as a beginner, I think you can get up and printing very quickly. Now as a veteran or someone who has experienced 3D printing, you're also going to get these same benefits, but you're also going to get complete access to modify or change this 3D printer in whatever way you want. In no way is Chitty locked this 3D printer down. This is running Clipper firmware and we have total access to it. Now that being said, this is a version of Clipper that is a few versions behind. Generally the reason they do this is because in order for the touchscreen to communicate with Clipper, they need to make some concessions and that is where we see it. That being said, Chitty has been pretty diligent with its previous printers when it comes to updating Clipper firmware releases. So hopefully down the line, we will see those newer Clipper releases available to us. But right now, we have most all of the features we need. If you are interested in buying this 3D printer, I'm gonna have a link in the description or you can go directly to Chitty's website. If you have questions about this, other printers or Clipper firmware in general, 
please leave a comment below. If you own this printer and you just want to talk about it, again, the comment section is where it's at. If you have not already, please join the Discord. It is always going day and night. We talk food, drink, 3D printers, of course. It is a bunch of great people, and I thank everyone who has joined. I implore you, sign up, jump in, and start a conversation now. Thank you so much for sticking around so long. Our next video is going to be showcasing Octo Everywhere and how we can get it onto your printer right now for free. Get access to your printer from everywhere and get free print failure detection. It's great. So thank you all for showing up. And until next time, boys, girls, everybody else, keep on printing.